So, you want to photograph jewelry, eh? There's a few things you're going to need before you start. Number one is a macro lens, preferably a 105 millimeter. Number two, a sturdy tripod. Number three, an LED light with the ability to let you change the color temperature. That's a plus. If you don't have that type of LED, that's okay. If you have two lights, that's even better. Number four, obviously, the camera. <laughs> Without that, we won't be taking any pictures. And number five, most importantly, a lot of patience. What's good, guys? This is Vahography. I'm Vahagen, your rock and roll photographer. And in this video, I'm going to go over how I shoot jewelry with a macro lens. I got an email yesterday, Mr. Bin Shehab. Hi, Vahagen. Good day. You have an awesome YouTube channel. Thanks, Bin. And I like it because it's very basic and to the point, I am a Canon user. That's cool. Also, I'm working on a project for jewelry product photography. I'm having a hard time with the Z6 and the 105 mic micro lens. I appreciate it if you can share the camera settings. Kind regards, Bin Shehab. Well, good question, sir. I just thought I'd make a quick little video on this topic, how I shoot jewelry photography with the macro lens. So number one, it's key to have a tripod. A tripod and a light because it's very difficult to stay in focus and to hold the camera, you wanna eliminate any kind of camera shake from anywhere. So there's a few important factors when you're photographing jewelry with the macro lens. Number one, you wanna have some kind of directional light. And number two, you wanna be in focus, tack sharp. So in order to do this, you wanna stop your macro lens down to about F16, F20, F22, maybe even further sometimes. So you don't want to shoot it at f8, f9, wide open, no. So in order to achieve this kind of photograph, you need to have good light or you need to shoot long exposure on a tripod and stop it down. Stop it down so you get everything sharp and focused. There is really no depth of field there. You want to crank that thing down as, as far as you can. So the first thing you want to do before you adjust all your settings is adjust your cropping. Take a couple of shots normal, wide open. Just set the camera the way you want to shoot the jewelry. Set the jewelry up, set the lights, really zone in on what angle you want to shoot the jewelry at and just adjust the composition of the frame before you dial in all the settings. Now, let's say you got the composition down, the camera's on a tripod stable, the lights are set up. Now what you want to do is dial in the settings. Now, like I said earlier, we need to shoot at a very slow shutter speed. The reason is you want to be at ISO 100 or the lowest that your camera can shoot on. You want to eliminate any kind of noise whatsoever. Shoot on the lowest ISO possible. Number two, white balance. What kind of look are you after? Obviously you're shooting raw. However, you want to set the white balance as close as possible to your ideal look you're after. You want something warm, you want something cool. I know some jewelry, especially when it's white gold diamonds, uh, it looks nicer when it's a little bit on the cooler side. Shoot raw so you could adjust that in post anyway, but try to dial it in, like I said, as close as possible. If you're shooting, let's say, for example, F16, F20, F22, F24, you need light. You need light or you need a long exposure. So now you want to set the timer on the camera. You want to eliminate any kind of shake whatsoever. So, for example, you're taking a shot with your finger with the shutter release button. You want to eliminate that. So set it. On the camera, maybe a two second timer. So after you release the trigger, two seconds later, it will take the shot. It also depends on how much light you have on the ring. You might wanna play with the direction of light. Jewelry, gold is a little tricky. You get a lot of shine, bling bling here and there. It's nice to have two or three lights. Now, if you only have one, you can use that, that's fine. It's nice to have two or three, but you can do it with one, that's not a problem. Here's an example of a two LED setup. One of the lights is stationary, as you could see. It's lighting up the foreground and a little bit of the rings. And the other light in my hand, I'm moving it left to right just to make it shine and sparkle. This is perfect when you're doing video. The light I'm using is an Aperture MC Pocket Light. It's small, lightweight, and it's full of features. It costs about 100 bucks, and it's well worth it. You can mount it onto a stand and even attach it to anything magnetic and some sample shots for you guys.
Never put a limit on your creativity. The sky is the limit on what you could do with jewelry. That light I just showed you guys has a full ray of effects built in. And as you could see, I'm putting it to good use right now. Also, if you're shooting rings, pendants, whatever type of jewelry it is, it's always good to change your angle a little bit. Take a couple of shots with the first angle, then switch your position, see which one looks better. So to answer your question, Ben, tripod, lowest ISO possible, stop your aperture down, 16, 20, 22, and set your camera to a timer. Play with the lighting. Lighting is key as well. Also, try not to use natural light when you're photographing jewelry. The reason is because when you're photographing jewelry, you don't get that bling bling look, that shine look that people want to see, customers want to see. The image looks flat and it just doesn't look too appealing for jewelry. So try to use LEDs, point them to a couple of directions, get that shine out of the jewelry, guys. Don't use natural light when you're photographing jewelry. Also, when you're shooting white gold jewelry, for example, try to use a background color that'll look nice. You don't want to drown out the jewelry by using a white color with the white gold. It just doesn't look good. You want to use a contrasting color that'll look nice and that'll bring the product out. Since you're shooting with a super detailed, sharp lens, all the defects come out. For example, fingerprints. Try to polish up the jewelry before you shoot it. You'd be surprised, guys. I shoot wedding rings and you see a little hair popping out somewhere. <laughs> you might not be able to see it with the naked eye, but with the macro lens, all the defects just come right at you. Well, hopefully this video helped you guys out. Shoot jewelry with the macro lens. One other thing I want to add. If you're shooting and if you don't have a tripod and you want to try this handheld, it's difficult. You're going to have to shoot it with a much higher shutter speed uh, 125, 160, hold it very steady. You're gonna need a lot more light. I don't suggest hand holding the shot at all. You're focusing, you breathe, you go out of focus. It just doesn't work out. Get a tripod. They don't cost that much. You already have a nice expensive lens with the fancy camera. Why not just get a tripod? Don't be lazy, set it up. Sometimes when you're shooting weddings, I know there's no tripod available. Um, so in that case, yeah, use that technique I just mentioned. Uh, shoot at a little higher ISO, bring up the shutter speed and hold it very steady because the key is to stop that aperture down. You don't want to shoot the ring at f4. If you have a question for me related to photography, go ahead and comment down below and you never know, I might feature it in one of the videos. We'll see. So anyway, thanks for watching guys. We'll catch you on the next video. Like and subscribe to Vahography for more tips and tricks in photography. This is Vahography, I'm Vahagen, your rock and roll photographer. We'll see you on the next video, guys. <laughs>